Welcome to another Fantasy Goodfellas video where we talk about the top 30 wide receiver rankings for week four. You ready? The Fantasy Goodfellas. Boom, boom, boom. Hey. Ah. Rolling on the field. All right, we are in week four, and what we want to do is talk about the top 30 wide receiver rankings. And uh, what we're going to do in this video is show you some stats, show you some rankings that some other people have done, so that way you have an idea of how to set your own lineups. But our stats, our graphs, and our uh, information is what we're hoping that you find the most interesting. All right, let's get started. All right, and number one, we have Tyreek Hill at the Buffalo Bills. Now, Tyreek Hill is having an amazing season so far. Uh, he wanted to have 2,000 receiving yards. And uh, if we just look, in week two, he had almost 220 yards. In week, I mean, in week one, he had 220 yards, a little over, a little under. In week Two, 40 yards, and then he had a bounce back game for himself uh, to get over 153 yards. So that's doing pretty good. You can't go wrong with Tyreek Hill. At number two, you have Justin Jefferson at the Carolina Panthers. And Justin Jefferson last week had, he was 100, 149 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. If we go back and look, the week before, he had 159 receiving yards, but no touchdowns. And in week one, he had 150 receiving yards. So if you look, that projection is pretty good. Look at that, look at that average right there. That's about over 150 yards every week. And that's insane uh, if you look at that. But that's Justin Jefferson. You know what you're getting with him. At number three... We have Devontae Adams at the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, Devontae Adams had a stellar week three. He was the number one ranked receiver with 172 yards and two TDs. But we always forget, how is he doing on the season? And that's what I kind of want to point out. In week one, he was the 35th ranked. In week two, the 15th ranked. In week three, uh, the number one ranked. It just shows that Jimmy Garoppolo is kind of getting comfortable with that offense. We should, ex you know, we should expect that to continue. At number four, at number four, we have Keenan Allen at the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, uh, Keenan Allen had 215 receiving yards, did not find the end zone. And if you look at all those targets, what I want to do is come and look at the team stats. Look at Justin Herbert, 405 receiving yards, three TDs. He threw to seven, eight different receivers that game. Justin Herbert's doing really well. Keenan Allen had a, a stellar game. And I believe Mike Williams is hurt. So now all of a sudden, Keenan Allen's going to be the go-to target once again. Can't go wrong with Keenan Allen. At number five, Jamar Chase at the Tennessee Titans. Now, Jamar Chase had... I believe, a record in targets and receptions. Uh, I have to double-check that, but he had 141 receiving yards. He was the 11th-ranked receiver in Week 3. And again, if we just want to look at this, uh, Joe Burrow had 259 yards but zero TDs. I think that's what's hurting them this season. There's, they're not really getting into the end zone. Uh, but we expect more from Jamar Chase. He kind of had a good game, just didn't get into that end zone like you probably picked him in the first round, so you expect him to get into the end zone for those points. At number six, Stefan Diggs, home versus Miami. Now, again, if you're like me, sometimes I don't always see every game. I'm not doing all the research, so I'm depending on my own research to kind of see what I'm doing and see how I'm going to do my lineups. But Stefan Diggs, you're going to start anyways. Not a big, not a big surprise there. But I definitely want to kind of look at the, the team overall. Josh Allen, 218 yards, one receiving touchdown, one passing TD, 460, 46 yards rushing, and uh, one TD. So this is the overall picture. I think they're just, uh, they're going to do well. I don't know, but, you know, that's going to be a shootout. 
hopefully that's a shootout. At number seven, we have Debo Samuel, home versus the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Arizona Cardinals came off a big win against Dallas, and they're looking surprisingly good, obviously. And Debo Samuel had 129 receiving yards and one receiving touchdown. I like to kind of just look overall, how's he doing? He's kind of picking up a little bit. It just shows that Brock Purdy, I saw Brock Purdy play, um, and he looks smooth with his passes. But uh, Debo Samuel had a touchdown in the last two games, and it kind of gives you his points that he did a little bit better. Remember, we're standard rankings, uh, standard scoring. And I just want to say we're live. So if we make mistakes, just know that's part of being live. But, again, I'm just showing you overall stats, try to get you into some different lineups. At number nine, eight, Amonra St. Brown will be at the Green Bay Packers. Now, Amonra had 102 receiving yards. He was questionable, I believe, during that week. And um, that in week two, 102 receiving yards. And in week one, 71 receiving yards. So he's doing fairly well. He's doing really well, obviously. And I just want to... I just want to look at his overall ranking so you can kind of see where he's going to be. He was 11th in week one, 41st in week two, and he was ranked 27 in week three. And that's with 102 receiving yards. It's all about that end zone to kind of push you to the top tier. At number nine, we have Puka Nakua at Indianapolis Colts. Now, this was on prime time that game. It was a tough game, but uh, he had 72 receiving yards. Tua Atwell was on there, 50. So it just shows that, um, you know, I think you're not going to expect that from him. He might not even get a start. Even if he's your third best wide receiver, he's an if. I think it's, um, a, little, it's a little much to put him at, at number nine. At 10, you got C.D. Lamb. Home versus the New England Patriots. Now, I didn't watch that game. I know Dallas did not play that well. And here's the ranks and stats to show it. 53 receiving yards. And if I want to see what he did the week before, 143 receiving yards. And in week one, 77 receiving yards. So that's not bowing well for him. And I think seeing him in the top 10, especially where he came in, um, I think it's a little stretch to see him there. Uh, if you're a Dallas fan, you're dependent on CeeDee Lamb. I just don't think it's going to happen this week. At number 11, A.J. Brown will be home versus the Washington Redskins. Now, remember, a couple weeks back, there was a little feud going on between Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown. Now look what's happened. 14 targets, 131 receiving yards. I think that's a bounce-back game. I think they're going to put him in the game plan. He's going to do okay. But, again, let's look at this overall picture here. Now, uh, DeAndre Swift, 130 rushing yards. If you're a De uh, DeAndre Swift owner, you're super happy about that. If you're a Devontae Smith, you're a little sad. You don't have as many targets this week. Um, so that's going to hurt you. So Jalen Hurts is definitely looking A.J. Brown's way. If you're an A.J. Brown owner, should bode pretty well for you. At number 12, D.K. Metcalf at the New York Giants. Now, this should be an interesting game. Metcalf, out of 112 receiving yards, did not find the end zone. I kind of want to look to see. Now, he's picking up a little bit. That offense is going. But how many TDs did he, he, he only got in week one? And I expect more for a, a big, fast receiver like Metcalf. That offense, they should be familiar with each other. Just don't understand why he's not getting into that offense. At 12, I think he's okay where he belongs. At 13, Chris Alave, home versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I didn't watch any of this game, didn't see any highlights. Um, but here you go. You can see eight, eight receptions on 11 targets, 104 receiving yards. If I want to kind of look to see where he is on the season, He's, he's, he's half to the end of the top 30 rankings. So to put him here, I think, is a little stretch for him. 
especially with Derek Carr going down. So that's going to be a stretch to see. Alave here at 13. At 14, T. Higgins will be at the Tennessee Titans. Now, T. Higgins was kind of injured, went to the locker room, came back, played. But he, I don't think he's having too good of a season. He had a good week two, but he's not having too good of a season. I don't know what's going on with him. Uh, yeah, that week two was good, but just, I don't know, it's just something seems off with T. Higgins. I think this is a gamble. But, again, we're looking at the top 30 wide receivers. We, if you're in a 16-team league and you got three receiver spots, you're going to put him here. Two starting receivers in a flex spot, he's going to be in there anyways. But at number 15, Mike Evans at New the New Orleans Saints. Mike Evans almost had a touchdown in that game, that Monday night game. He just, that was a good play by the defensive back. Could have had two TDs. Uh, I like what they got going on there. Baker Mayfield didn't show it, but early in that first quarter, he was slinging it. He was finding those open receivers. It looked pretty good. I think that line's terrible, and I think that's what's hurting them right now. So they're 2-1 and one ranked. And I like kind of what Baker Mayfield's doing. He's got the weapons in Godwin and Evans. Um, I just Rashad White looked good when he had a chance. It just didn't work out for him that game. At number 16, you got Calvin Ridley, home versus the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the problem with Ridley is it's question mark. He had a stellar week one, kind of disappeared, and I kind of want to just go over this. Again, this is why I like graphs and stats. It's because sometimes I forget Week one, you know, over 100 receiving yards. Week two, uh, you know, 30, 30 plus. And then week, f week three, he had about 40 yards. And let's look, one touchdown. Now, there's this high expectations for Calvin, Calvin Ridley here. It's not happening, though, and that, and that hurts fantasy owners. So versus the Atlanta Falcons, should do well. I expect a bounce-back game. I think being 16 is fine. At number 17, Devontae Smith, home versus the Washington Redskins. And I guess this just goes, is it going to be slinging to A.J. Brown or is it going to be going to Devontae Smith? I think that it's going to continue with A.J. Brown. If Devontae Smith doesn't get in in the end zone, I don't see him in the top 30. At number 18, you got Amari Cooper, home versus the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Amari Cooper has looked good this season. And you can tell just by his rankings. Where does he rank? Uh, ranks 60. See, I was wrong, right? This is why the stats, right? Just, you know, you forget kind of what's going on. In week one, he had 37 receiving yards. In week two, he had 90 receiving yards. And in week three, he had 116 receiving yards and one receiving TD. And this reminds me that Deshaun Watson had one of his throwback games. He was slinging it, he's finding a lot of his receivers, looked really well. I think this just continues that Deshaun Watson's going to play. It's going to bode really well from Amari Cooper. I like Amari Cooper. He's going to do well. At number 19, you got Jerry Judy at the Chicago Bears. Now, with Judy, you thought by Judy coming back, it was going to be, Corton Sutton was going to be the forgotten guy. Now, Ju Jerry Judy came back, and Corton Sutton had a great game. And that's where he got into the end zone, had 91 receiving yards, where Jerry Judy had 81 receiving yards, but no touchdowns. But that was an abysmal game. I don't know. That was unbelievable, that game. But if you look at it, Russell Wilson in a normal game, that was pretty good. He, he found his receivers. They had over 75 receiving yards, almost three receivers with over 75 receiving yards. That's pretty good. It's just, is it going to go Jerry Judy, Corton Sutton, or is Mims? I think Jerry Judy continues to be the number one target. He's going to do well. At number 20, George Pickens at the Houston Texans. Now, again, this is where stats come in. I didn't see the game, didn't see any highlights. I'm dependent on these stats. 75 receiving yards, not bad. Uh, I don't like six targets, so let me take a look at the overall picture. Six targets, and there was, and there was 28 
attempts. That's not a lot of attempts. And it's just, it just, I don't know what's going on with that offense. It's just, it looks like it's falling apart. I think all this, if you're a Pittsburgh Steelers owner, all these people, all these players are questionable except Pat Fryermuth. Pat Fryermuth, if you just look, if he got into the end zone as a t- uh, uh, with a touchdown, you know he's going to be ranked in the top 15 for sure. So I think everybody's questionable except the tight end. It's tough to be a, 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 a Pittsburgh Steelers owner. At 21, you got Michael Pittman Jr. He'll be home versus the Los Angeles Rams. Now, I believe Anthony Richardson is expected to play again. And this kind of look, if we look at Gardner Minshew, he, it's 22, 227 passing yards. Now, the question goes, do you automatically go to Anthony Richardson or do you stick with Minshew? They got a little quarterback controversy. It's going to play out. Here, you got Michael Pittman with Gardner Minshew, 77 yards and nine catches. Now, if we want to look back and see what, um, what that quarterback did. So let's go back to week two. Let's look at the team. Here you go, Anthony Richardson, 56. He's more of a rusher. Now let's go back to, uh, let's go back to Richardson and see how he looked in week one. Okay, there you go. So, and if we look at the team in week one, you have 97 receiving yards and one touchdown. So either way, I think Michael Pittman's going to do well, and that's just looking at the overall picture here. At number 22, you got Tyler Lockett at the New York Giants. What's going on with Lockett? Is he falling off? You know, DK Metcalf had a bounce back game. Let's just take a look at, I think, week two, Tyler Lockett did well. That's right. Week two, he had, he was the 10th ranked receiver, and he had 59 receiving yards and two TDs. Whereas in week three, he still had 34 receiving yards and no TD. So what's going to happen? And I don't know. If he's playing the New York Giants, I don't expect much from Lockett in week two, or th- or four. So we'll have to take a look at that. At number 23, Jacoby Myers will be at the Los Angeles Chargers. Jacoby Myers had a lot of pep in his step, so to speak, and they were looking pretty good. Jimmy Garoppolo was slinging it, even though he got injured, looked bad, but he was slinging it, 12 targets. I think Jacoby Myers and that offense is kind of warming up a little bit. But just taking an overall snapshot, look at that, 324 yards, Passing yards and two TDs. Garoppolo's getting comfortable in that offense. I think this continues. I think they're warming up. At number 24, you got Cortland Sutton at the Chicago Bears. Now, if you're a Cortland Sutton owner, it's do you start him, do you bench him? Do you start him, do you bench him? You got to start starting him. Uh, I, I hate to say it, but Cortland Sutton's playing good this year, and you might have to just continue to start him. At number 25, you got Garrett Wilson, home versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, it's tough to be a Jets owner. Where do you go here? You can't depend on the running backs. You can't depend on the receivers. And you can't depend on the quarterback. But yet, we drafted these guys. We expected big things from Garrett Wilson. We expected Lazard to do well. It's not happening. They're going against the Chiefs. The Jets are going to have to throw it. I think Garrett Wilson has a better, better game. At number 26, Tutu Atwell. Now, of course, you got Matthew Stafford, great quarterback. They're hurting because they don't have Cooper Cup. If you have Cooper Cup, I think everybody does well. It opens that up a little bit, but it's tough, right? They played a, a, a slinging game. So let's just look at how many. He threw it for 33 times, 269 yards in the air. But look at this, 50 yards, 72 yards, 46 yards. That's not cutting it. The only uh, standout is Tyler Higby. But uh, you expect more. It's just tough. 2-2 two, two out well to be in the top 26, I think you're pushing it. So you got two receivers from the – LA here 
Where's the other one? You got Puka, Nakua, and then you got Tutu Awa. I don't see, I think that's a stretch to put both those receivers in the top 30. At number 27, Adam Thielen, home versus the Minnesota Vikings. You know he's going to want to play well, right? Getting traded. Um, I think he's going to definitely have to play well. But look at this. Adam Thielen was the fifth-ranked wide receiver in week three. 145 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown. And look at this. DJ Shark, Shark with 86 yards as well. So just take a look at this. Andy Dalton comes in, right? 361 passing yards, two TDs. Everybody's feeding here. So I think it's going to go well. As long as Adam, Andy Dalton starts, Thielen will play well. At number 28, you got Terry McLaurin at the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, again, I didn't see anything about Terry McLaurin lately, but I know Sam Howell is playing well. So let's just take a look at this. In week two, Terry McLaurin had 54 receiving yards and a touchdown. And that only puts him at, at the, the 27th best receiver in week two. In week one, he has 31 receiving yards. So let's go back to week three and take a look at the team overall. Now, you, the tight ends ain't feeding. Wide receivers ain't feeding. The only standout here is Brian Robinson Jr. Now they're going against the Philadelphia Eagles. That's going to be a tough matchup. I don't expect much from anybody except maybe Brian Robinson again in week four. At number 29, you got DeAndre Hopkins, home versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, everybody, you keep on seeing DeAndre Hopkins in the top 30. He wasn't in the top 30 in week two. Wasn't in the top 30 in week, uh, he wasn't in the top 30 in week three. Wasn't in the top 30 in week two and was not in the top 30 in week one. Now, everybody's expecting him to be in the top 30 again. I just don't see it. So why are we keeping depending on DeAndre Hopkins? It's not happening. At number 30, Nico Collins, home versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Nico Collins uh, in week two was stellar. He helped your lineups. He was the fourth-ranked wide receiver in week two. All of a sudden, now you get to week three and 34 receiving yards. Now you're questioning whether you're starting him or not. So C.D. Stroud is playing well. Now you got Tank Dell and Nico Collins. But do you start him? Because Nico Collins could be your third or fourth best wide receiver on your fantasy football roster. Do you start him? I don't know. They're going against the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's going to be a tough matchup. Don't know if you should depend on Nico Collins in this game or not. So very, very, very dependent on that. Not sure. That is the top 30 wide receiver rankings for week four. I hope showing you some stats and getting into some teams and seeing their statistics helps you with your own lineups. I just want to say always thanks for watching. Don't forget we also... Uh, do some other videos as well where we do the waiver wire pickups and we do the injury report. But uh, good luck fantasy owners in week four. Don't forget to like and subscribe.